Hello lovelies, welcome to today's Timeless Pick a Card reading where I'm going to have a look at the different psychic abilities, okay? So you might have more than one psychic ability, it's not unusual to have several, so if you're drawn to more than one of the readings then listen to more than one of the readings, okay? Whatever you're drawn to that will be relevant for you. Now some of these psychic abilities they might be dormant at the moment for you, so it, they're, you know, when you listen to the reading it it could be that you decide to awaken this psychic ability and start a transformation process or you decide that you don't want to. For some of you, your ability might be known to you already, but you want confirmation of it or you want to know what other abilities you might have. And also, just to remind you, I've got a psychic expansion course available on my website at the moment. So if you do want to expand your psychic ability or even discover more about the psychic ability that you have, so there is a link below the video to my website for the course. Okay, so let's get on with the readings now. Hello group one, thank you for joining me. So as I mentioned in the introduction, you might have more than one psychic ability, so you might be drawn to more than one reading. Okay, so that's absolutely fine. Now let's see what we've got here so far. 13 affinity, that one jumped out. We've got four stability and 49 ascension. I'm going to get a couple more cards. And a grandmother of Jesus seeding the light, laying foundations, divine plan. We've got Ace of Hearts, love. And Cherish. There is a bit of a theme that I'm picking up here. Uh, bear with me a moment. Okay, right, that came through very clearly then. I was a bit confused to begin with, quite honestly, when I saw the cards, but just then when I paused and I spirit, it came through very, very clearly. So for group one, you are empaths or highly sensitive. You, some of you, and most likely all of you, have got the gift of clairsentience, okay? Now, clairsentience is the ability to perceive energy. So this could encompass so many different um, formats in the way that you have your ability, the way that your ability works, okay? So I'll just go through the different ways that, that this could affect you. Now, especially with the affinity card, I think that you are very sensitive to the energy of other people. And so you might believe that you're an empath or a highly sensitive person, but the chances are just as high that you've got clairsentience and you pick up more than just a person's emotional energy, okay? I feel that you can pick up on someone's fears and insecurities, their stress and anxiety, and also their health problem. Because remember, you know, everything creates a frequency. Everything is energy. So you have the ability to tune into the frequency of everything. Where a clairvoyant sees things visually, the clairaudient hears things. What you do is pick up the frequencies of things. So some of you might be very sensitive to earth frequencies. You might know when the what the weather's going to do by the changing in air pressure. You might be very sensitive to that. You might know when it's going to rain, that kind of thing. You might know when a storm's coming. You might actually be very sensitive to lightning, you know, and feel it physically. You might be able to sense the energy of people's illness in their body by feeling that heavy, dense, negative frequency that the illness gives off. You might be able able to sense a blockage in someone's aura. You might be able to sense someone's aura by, you know, moving your hand in the space around the physical body by sensing their energy field. You could also probably pick up on the energy of a person's thoughts as well as their emotions where you, you don't necessarily hear the thought, but you feel the energy of it, you know, so you can tell when somebody's lying, you can tell when somebody's being deceptive, whether it's to themselves or to other people. But I'm also seeing another energy coming through this reading with this group. I feel that you have this capacity. Uh, I mean, this isn't necessarily a psychic ability, but it's certainly... It's like an ability that you can develop over time and that's coming from the heart. That is not easy in this reality and a lot of us on a spiritual path are challenged with this lesson over and over again where we find that if we come from our head... It doesn't always lead us to joy and happiness and positive feelings. But when we learn to come from our heart, because the heart connects with spirit and the intuition 
and our soul self, our spiritual self. And I feel that is one of your gifts, you know, is learning how to come from the heart. So you might have, depending where you are on your spiritual journey, you might have had a lot of hard lessons in relation to that where people have hurt you a lot and you've taken everything to heart and you might even have closed your heart down. But I feel like because you've got this clairsentience ability, it's the ability of being able to feel everything and the heart is all about feeling. So there's like this um, extra dimension to you, group one, if you like this extra dimension where you eventually, as you go through your life, you will get better and clearer at coming from your heart center. It could take a while to work through all the healing and the trauma that you've endured from being hurt by other people, but that's happening to bring you to the opposite end of that experience, because that's how I always see lessons. It's like we get the negative side of it, and then the negative side of it leads us to the positive side of it. You know, without sorrow, we don't know what joy is without fear we don't know what courage is do you know what I mean so I feel like with you group one you will have been hurt a lot more than the average person you will have been traumatized a lot and by other people you know always by other people and that's because the so the, the soul contract the lesson your soul wants you to learn as a human that what your soul wants to experience as a human is learning unconditional love and embodying that frequency of, of love because you know as you tune into to that that's when you start feeling the love frequency in others more and more and more and that's part of the sent clairsentience ability where you can sense love the love of spirit that is in everything because spirit is everything everything is spirit and spirit is love and as you become more tuned into your heart center you will feel this love energy all around you you know and it will become a part of who you are it will become your way of life oh and look who has jumped on the table in this reading, the embodiment of love. This is Snowflake, okay? And he is the most loving little pussycat that I have ever known. He just wants to spread love to everyone all the time. He adores Lily and Toby. Uh, oh, bless him, he purrs such a lot. Hello, darling. Thank you for coming into this reading and spreading your love. He is such a softy and a sweetheart. Every single day, he snuggles up next to me and purrs his little heart out, puts his arm. He's, he often lays between my legs when I'm lying on the sofa in the evening, you know, just relaxing. And he just puts his arms around my legs and snuggles them. He's just such a sweetheart. So for you, group one, this is all about feeling. This isn't just the empath ability. This is clairsentience and embodying the expression of love in all its forms. And there we've got Snowflake. Let's see what else we've, we've... I mean, look, we've got the Cherish card and the Love card next to each other. And that's what this little cat is all about. He has actually helped me to open up my heart even further, haven't you? I don't know if you can hear him, but he's purring. He's not near the microphone, so it might not pick it up. Bless him. And he's actually with Lily, with the kittens quite a lot, taking care of them. So he's got, although he's a boy, he's got a very, very strong feminine energy about him. He's not as interested in Toby, as like Toby goes out every night. He's out all night, sleeps outside. Whereas Snowflake just wants to spread the love, you know. So Toby's like in search of the females and, Snow, and Snowflake just wants to be around the females and the males and all the little kittens. He just adores Lily, don't you, darling? So I feel like that's part of your, your gift group, one, that you have this potential that will grow and grow and grow. Sorry, he's knocking the camera. Throughout your life where you will embody this love frequency and it will, you'll get to this point where you totally and utterly come from the heart. I mean, that's not a quick lesson to learn and that's something that you will be learning throughout your life and as more of your life passes by, you will become more and more from your heart energy until you'll get to the point as you near the end of your life before you leave here where you reach that goal of being the embodiment 
of pure love and other people will just adore being around you as well as animals and children you know those lovely loving frequencies okay so i really hope that reading has helped you group one thanks for listening let me know in the comments how this resonates with you i'd love to hear from you hope you have a fab day and i'll see you next time Hello group two, thank you for joining me in the reading. I'm going to have a look at what your psychic ability is and remember if you're drawn to more than one reading then listen to more than one because you might have other abilities than just one. Let's see what we've got here so far. King of Angels, Peaceful Warrior, number one the Magician, 17 the Star. I love those cards. I love that blue energy on them as well. That one's jumped out. We've got, what have we got? Two there. 14, the Initiation and the Count Saint Germain. And Archangel Raphael. Oh, wow. Let's get this one. Now then, Raphael is the divine healer, isn't he? 20 deliberate okay yeah i feel like this the energy of this group is like you've got a special healing gift actually i feel like you are like a, a divine channel i mean we're all divine channels aren't we but you know some of us are very closed down some of us are naturally open and we can channel information straight from source but i feel for you group two you have the ability of like a a real healer, you know, where you could make a significant difference to people's lives. I mean, I see a lot of, I've come across a lot of healers myself who I've been to and, and nothing, you know, I'm very, very sensitive to energy and I just don't feel a thing and nothing changes whatsoever. And not everybody is actually the, they're not gifted with that ability. Let's say it how it is. They're just not gifted with the ability and they might have too many of their own blocks for the healing energy to get through before it actually reaches their client, you know? And I've experienced that. I've been on the receiving end of that. And I've also been on the receiving end of people who do have a natural healing ability. And the difference is phenomenal. So I feel for you, group two, you are natural healers. Some of you will naturally go into this at some point in your life where you'll feel this deep calling inside of you to help other people like with their health problems, with their health imbalances. And that could be mentally, emotionally, spiritually or physically or all of those. I feel like you also have this ability as um, I am getting this strong energy of like a wise person so like the energy of a guide so I feel like a lot of you will have been um, incarnated before taking on roles such as uh, a medicine man or woman or a shaman or priestess or priest or um, like a a tri tribal healer you know um, there are a lot I'm sure there are lots of other names that I haven't mentioned but that kind of energy because I'm getting the sense that you have been working towards this for lifetimes and building on your experience and your skills and your knowledge and your wisdom relating to the healing modalities the, the natural healing modalities I'm talking about. Some of you might have gone into the medical profession, like the Western medical profession, and then realized that it wasn't really what you wanted and it wasn't really moving in the direction that you wanted it to. And then you've moved into more natural methods. Some of you, this might yet still to be awakened. And a lot of a, a message for a lot of you, the spirit's making me say right now, is that make sure you spent time healing yourself before you start healing others. Because because otherwise that ends up having a detrimental effect on you and sometimes on other people. The spirit is, is reiterating this very strongly that you spend time working on yourself first and clearing your own energy because in doing so this will add to your knowledge and wisdom of how healing works and how people can actually heal themselves. The more that you understand the true cause of dizzy, dis ease disharmony, disease, um, the more that you understand that, the more that you will be able to help people because you will have gathered a lot of experience, wisdom from what you've gone through yourself and also what you've observed in others. I am also getting the sense that with this group, because I, I mentioned that I feel like you're a, like you've got a guide type of energy. So I feel like in other lifetimes, you are a spirit guide, you choose to take on the role of a spirit guide to humans. But I'm, I'm also getting the sense of 
um, like this, a, a, like a, a leadership role in a, in as far as guiding people. But again, I feel that relates to the healing aspect. So some of you might become talking therapists. That's the sense that I'm getting. I really do get this strong impression that you have the ability to change people's lives in a huge way, you know, and help them to transform by whatever it is that you end up choosing to do in relation to your spiritual work, whether you do this as a job or whether you do it as something just because you enjoy doing it or whether you do it as a part-time thing, however it manifests for you, I feel as though you have this ability to transform people. And I think part of that actually comes from your aura. I, I think that you've got like a magical aura where it's like when your aura overlaps another person's aura, it has the ability to awaken them or to help them to come to terms with something that they haven't wanted to come to terms with, you know. I think that you even might might eventually get to the point where your aura will heal people just by them being in your presence because it will be such a powerful frequency. When You know, when you've reached to that point when you've done so much of your own inner healing that your aura, your energy becomes so clear and so crisp and so high frequency that just by being in this reality you heal people and I think that some of you will be able to do that from a distance as well I mean we can all distance heal we can all send healing to people but some people find that easier to connect with others at a distance um, than a lot of other people would you know that is a gift in itself where you are able to it's like projecting your consciousness because time and place Time and place and space, they're all illusions created in this reality. So really, there is no place and space. There is no time. And I feel that you group two have this ability to move through time, to move through space, to move through places, even to move through dimensions so that you can send healing forwards and backwards in time and across the oceans and to, you know to other people and even to even to other dimensions and to beings that aren't still here so some of you might even choose to heal people that have already crossed over you know back into the spirit realm as a way of healing family lines i can see this being quite an expansive gift for those of you who have chosen this reading where it isn't just a standard healer type of message here this is like quite a magical gift that you've got where you're able to accomplish things that other healers can't you know it feels very special it's a very special ability and I feel that some of you maybe not all of you take it if it resonates but some of you have got a very strong connection to the angels I'm picking that up whereas some of you are very strongly connected to the earth energies and so for some of you it might be both some of you might not resonate with either of those you might just have your own thing going on that you do in your own way where you download information and you just follow your own path you know so take what resonates for you group two I do I'm also getting the impression that um getting to this point that I've spoken about with this healing ability it's not going to happen overnight spirit is reiterating that uh, and saying that it's a gradual journey so even if you are a healer now or you're working some kind of health job or work whatever that is even if it's um western medicine i feel like you know you're just in this gathering phase where you are getting lots and lots of information and experience that which then brings you the wisdom that you need because i feel that something is going to happen later in life for you where this all of this that i've spoken about becomes very very apparent apparent and very forefront for you you know it becomes the forefront of your life and you could get to the point where people come from all around to see you or you work distance wise where you get people from all over the world that get in touch with you for, for you to help them and that they trust you to do that okay let me see if there's any other messages yeah, there's, there's a very strong message of transformation coming through where you will go through your own transformation first before you start helping people go through their transformation. But this is this is like a special gift that you have that you will be able to transform people's lives, okay? It's like turn things around for them. It's like breathing new life upon them almost because you will help them to shift in ways that they won't be able to, to do just by themselves because certain people, it's part of their life path that they do connect with others more, more so, you know? And 
in doing so, it's other people like you, for example, that will help those people. That because some people are here to work through things on their own. I've dis- I've realised this after many years. Some of us are here to really work through things on our own and become very very strong in doing so. But there are other people here who really have taken on this role of needing to connect with other people to help them to help themselves because they have chosen not to do it on their own. So I think you're that person that will help those people people more than any others you know and you can have such a a profound impact on their lives okay group two i really hope that has helped you i would love to hear from you as to how this resonates with you thanks so much for listening hope you have a lovely day and i'll see you next time Hello group three, thank you for joining me. I hope you're doing really well today. So I'm going to be getting some messages about what psychic ability you have. And remember, if you're drawn to more than one reading, because you might have several psychic abilities, then listen to as many readings as you feel you need to. Okay. I'm going to get one more card and then we'll see what we have got. Desiring intimacy, number 10, traveling, dance with life, awakening, mental strength, ace, uh, what's that, eight of spades, completion, nine of diamonds, and 21, joy. Actually, I feel called to get a couple more cards. Let's have a look at these, I think. I'm going to get those two. Feels like there's three there. No, there's only two. King of Pentacles and the Four of Wands. Okay. Okay, group three. I feel like your main ability is... Well, first of all, actually, before I talk about that, I want to mention that I think most of you listening to this are on your last incarnation in the earth reality or last but one. I don't feel like you're coming back. I feel like you've been here a lot. You've had enough now and you're ready to leave. And this is like wrapping up a lot of things going on for you. So that's just an additional message. It came through quite strongly when I was choosing the cards. So for this group, I feel like you have got the ability to um, astral travel Um, maybe also lucid dreaming, that's the word, the word wouldn't come into my mind then, Uh, lucid dreaming and astral travelling or astral projection. Now, astral travelling, you don't have to literally leave your body. I feel that for some of you, or maybe many of you listening, you've got a, a strong clairvoyant ability where you can project your psychic eye out into the other dimensions, the other realms and see what is going on. That's what I mean by astral projection or astral traveling. There are different ways to astral travel. It's not just about leaving your body. Having the ability to project your consciousness, that is also astral traveling. So I feel like there will come a point in your life, if it hasn't happened already, where you will have some kind of a psychic awakening and this will open up your third eye, You'll have the opportunity to expand your psychic ability. You might feel like you want to uh, go to groups or development groups or take some courses or get a mentor or something like that. I have a psychic expansion course available on my website, as I mentioned in the introduction. Um, But I feel like there is this, I'm getting this energy for you, group three, that it's all to do with your conscious mind, your ability, um, where it's like you've got this ability to see into things. So I think some of you could be really good with spotting detail. You might even have jobs where you're detail oriented, you know, so, you know, take that if it resonates, leave it if it doesn't. But I feel like you have this ability to see what others can't. And that comes from the clairvoyant ability where you notice detail. Some of you might be very attuned to colour because colour is a very visual thing. And you might work with colour, you might heal with colour, or you might might be very drawn to nature because of its colour. But when you might go through these phases where your psychic ability is going through levels of opening up and when you look around it's like 
everything seems more vivid and more colourful and it's because your psychic eye is opening up for you to see more. So I'm getting the message from spirit that your psychic vision is going to open up in stages once you've had the initial um, opening, awakening of your psychic vision. I'm also getting a message as well where you have the ability to see into other people like it's like you can you just know what is going on with them like um you can see their problems and you can see immediately how they can fix them you can see their personality traits and things that they they find a challenge and you can see how how to help them to put that right you know to help them to to get through that to evolve i feel like you can this like you've got this is not an ordinary clairvoyant ability i have to say group 3 this is quite unusual but very special very um niched or niched it's very like specialized, I would say. That's a good word to use for it. It feels like a very specialized type of clairvoyance that you have. And I am getting the message for some of you. It keeps popping in and it won't go away. So I'm going to take uh, mention it to you. And some of you are also claircognizant where you get downloads of information. It's like, you know, like I've just been talking about you knowing things about people. I feel that that could connect with a claircognizant ability. Some of you, I feel might be gifted with more than one of the clairs you know like clairsentience as well where you pick up on certain frequencies I don't feel like you pick up on all the frequencies but I I feel like you've got this ability to tune into people in a really unusual way where you can see exactly is going what's going on with them and how to help them some of you might choose to use this as a, like um to help you with work in some way and at some point but I feel like you have this gift and at times I am getting for some of you that you might think that this feels like a curse because often knowing things about people might come as a burden for you and especially if you know if you're doing some astral traveling or I'm getting the message that some of you might get prophetic dreams. Sometimes, you know, knowing things can be a burden to carry and once you learn something about whatever situation or a person or whatever you can't then unknow it can you once you know it you can't unknow something and I feel that sometimes for this group that does seem like a bit of a burden that you're carrying but I do sense that as you get more familiar with your abilities and as you get older I feel that you'll move through that phase of where it feels like a burden or where it feels like a curse and you'll start to appreciate the the gift that you actually have because you will be able to kind of control it better. Um, I mean, I don't think that we can really truly control a gift because a gift is something that's given to us, but I think that you can learn how to work with it and how to incorporate it into your life because there will be times when you get downloads of information or when you see the truth in someone or something and then you wish you hadn't and it's like you can't stop it. But I think that you'll get to the point where you will accept this as part of the gift itself and as being a part of you. So I think that you have a gift of awakening other people as well because you have this way of seeing things that other people don't and you I also think that some of you will have this telepathic ability where when you're expressing yourself to someone it's like you will also project the energy of what you're imagining in your mind or what you're thinking and so even if the other person doesn't understand what you're saying they'll pick up on the frequency of it and they'll understand it that way. Do you know what I mean? So this is a very specialized kind of ability, a very unique ability. One or two of you might not develop that too strongly, but I think certainly as your psychic ability deepens and expands, that could happen for you. Especially if some of you get into the realm of like working with communication, you know, some of you might become speakers, you might have a YouTube channel, you might um, do podcasts, you might become writers or do something with writing, whatever form of communication is, I feel that you could channel into what you're communicating the energy of it. So people pick up on that energy and understand what you're expressing in a much deeper way. This is like a very expansive gift that I'm picking up on with this group. And it does feel like some of you will experience some parts of it more than other parts of it you know where 
Um, it will depend on your own unique circumstances and your own unique experiences and your own unique personality as to how this gift develops for you. I'm also picking up that with your aura, you do have this ability to uplift people because you've got this. It's like you with this clairvoyance and the claircognizance, it's like you get to a point at some point in your life where you embody the frequency of truth because you are truth seekers. This group are definitely truth seekers. And you'll get to the point where your own frequency emits the frequency of truth. And that will then help to awaken other people when you come in contact with them. Some people might not like that. They won't be aware what's going on, but they might feel uncomfortable around you because you're dislodging things that they've locked away, you know, or you're shattering their illusions and they don't like it because it's taken them out of their comfort zone. So be very aware of that happening. But for some people, you could change their lives literally just by knowing them, just by being around them. So I really hope that you found that useful, Group 3. And remember, if, you, if you're drawn to another reading, listen to another reading. Let me know how you resonate with this information in the comments. And thank you for listening. I'll see you next time and have a lovely day. Hello, Group 4. Thanks for joining me in the reading. Hope you're doing really well today. So we're having a look at your psychic abilities, what psychic ability you have. And remember, if you're drawn to more than one reading, you might have more than one psychic ability. So listen to as many as you feel you need to. Okay. Get one of these. We've got Magical Harmony, Caring, Awakening. That came out in the last reading, actually. Seven of Angels, Progress. 42 intuition and 21 joy that also came out i think it was in the previous reading Get a couple of these as well five of wands and number two the high priestess Look at that. We've got, I mean, the high priestess relates to the intuition, doesn't it? And we've got the intuition card as well. So with this group, I mean, you have got quite clearly, you've got very, very strong intuition, like, like off the charts intuition, you know, I feel like you've been intuitive since you were ch a child where you knew things that before they were going to happen. I feel that this group has also got foresight where you sense things coming in before they come in. And I think that some of you might even get prophetic dreams where you, you know what's going to happen or it's just like the, the strongest sense I'm getting with this group is, is not necessarily one of the Claire's like clairvoyant, for example, it's more that you have this ability to sense what's coming in. And that's not just for your person personal life for you I feel that you sense it with other people as well but I also feel that you can pick this up in the world you know on the worldwide stage where you know what's coming in before it happens you know a lot of people myself included I sensed what happened in 2020 I sensed that that was coming something like that in 2019 I didn't realize at the time what I was picking up but obviously when what happened happened I don't want to say any trigger words for YouTube here but um yeah I, I realized obviously the message I was getting and that was a big learning experience for me to pay a lot more attention to when things like that happened to me again I was just very I could not get enough of um films that were to do with pandemics and um oh, I've said the word now that's going to cause a trigger on YouTube but yeah that kind kind of thing you know the, those sorts of films where everybody in the world dies I mean obviously that didn't happen did it but yeah I was getting lots of warning signs and other things that, that have been happening around that time as well I got I, kept, I was getting these this sense and I just didn't know what it was telling me so now yeah I pay a lot more attention and I feel that with this group this is like a, a big learning experience for you through your life where 
you'll get to the point where you'll realize how tuned in you are to the it's like the future I feel like this is like you picking up on the psychic energy of the future I mean really you know there's no past present and future is there because time is not linear like we believe it is in the uh, in the human perception but this is I feel that this is your gift group for where you can access different timelines as if it were the present you know you've got this ability to look into the future just to know what's coming and also to go into the past and to pick up information from the past so some of you might be very much into discovering your past lives or you might even one or two of you might even be interested in be, in doing like past life regression with people um, to help people understand what has happened to them in the past so that they can understand themselves better in the present so I feel like you have got like this very strong intuitive sense of uh, foresight I guess we could call it uh, like knowing what's coming foresight getting information about the future before it happens on a, a small scale this will be like you'll know when someone's about to email you or you'll know when they're, they're going to call or you'll know when they're thinking about you or you'll know when something's going to happen but then it could move to a much bigger um, like feeling where you know years in advance when something's going to happen when a particular thing is going to come in you feel it so strongly like it's present a lot of people might liken this to manifestation but I see manifestation as tuning into the intuition where your intuition is giving you a prompt, the feeling of something that it already exists, but just not on your present timeline. And I feel that you could work very well with manifesting because you are so tuned into your intuition that you know what is going to be right for you and you know to focus on that. And like your intuition will give you these intuitive prompts saying this is going to come in, but you, on the downside to that, you might not fully understand like the time scale of it. And you might pick up on something so strongly in the present that feels like it's coming in and then it might take years to coming in. So part of having this ability is for you to learn patience and for you to realize how the time thing works in the 3D reality and that you are kind of operating outside of time. So you might sense something that comes in 50 years and it might feel so present for you. And then you've got to wait all that time to see if it comes in. Do you know what I mean? But then you might on the small scale, you'll know a minute before somebody calls you. So this gift is one of those, it's going to be like a lifelong journey for you learning about this and learning learning what your intuition is telling you and the information it's giving you and how to apply it to your life. And I think a lot of you listening to this group could go through a lot of doubt for quite a while, especially in the early stages, because I think that you will have been, I think I mentioned it at the beginning, that a lot of you will have been quite intuitive as kids um, but then maybe things happened for you to switch down or turn off that ability and so you stopped listening to it but you didn't stop getting the intuitive nudges you didn't stop getting that information but you might uh, uh, go through at some point in your life where you doubt it a lot and then you have to go through this process of learning to reconnect with your intuition and starting to trust it and if you, I mean if you want to do that one of the best ways to learn how to trust your intuition is to start a journal to write everything down that you get and then you can look back and see what has come to pass and to see how accurate you are I feel that um some of the information that you get and this is the downside to having these kinds of gifts sometimes is that you might not always get good things coming in good news coming in you know you might sense when difficult things are going to happen and not just to you but to other people you know you might get this strong intuitive sense like for example a couple that you know you might just know deep in your soul that they're going to split up without a doubt and then you have to learn how to detach yourself from that information and 
decide whether you're going to say anything and it's not necessarily just about somebody splitting up but you know you could get this intuitive information where you then have to take responsibility for knowing what you know and then deciding what to do with it and that could feel like a little bit of a burden but it's one of those things that um where spirit spirit saying that your guides will work with you with this ability and they will help you to learn discernment learn when to speak when not to speak when to say something to someone when not to say something and how to learn this gift of patience as well with yourself when you're sensing things that are a long way off but I also you know on the positive side you're also going to pick up on the joyful things that come into life like I spoke about with manifesting it's like you're just know when something's going to happen but you could spend a lot of time in the meantime doubting it while you're waiting for it to come in but still I feel that with you though group four these things are still going to happen it's not like they're dependent on whether you believe them it's like what you're picking up are on these destined moments in your life and other people's life it's like you're tuned into destiny and you're tuned into, in a way, some of you could be really tuned into people's soul contracts where you, that's how you know what's going to happen to them, you know, because you're picking up on all those agreements that their soul made before they came here. So some of you could choose to work with people in that way through, you know, through doing readings or spiritual guidance or spiritual counseling or something like that. But you, you have got to go through this phase of learning how and when to use this ability to help people you know what is going to be in somebody else's best interest so this is like a real like intense lifelong journey for you that's just going to open up and open up and open up so I really hope that's helped you group four thanks for listening let me know in the comments how this resonates with you and I will see you in the next video have a great day Hello group five, thank you for joining me in the reading. I hope you're doing really well today. So we're looking at what your psychic ability is. And remember, if you're drawn to more than one reading, listen to others because you could very well have several psychic abilities. Okay, take any information that resonates with you and leave anything that doesn't resonate, leave that behind. I'm going to get a couple of these. one and that one let's see what we've got so far 22 balance 47 love put those on there. we've got four of pentacles queen of pentacles the fool 32 salt and 13 the dustbin Okay, getting a very, very clear message with this group. This is the gift of alchemy, okay? You are here. I often see this as the energy of, so, I mean, we've got the balance card and that's how actually how I see this ability as someone who comes here as a balancer of energies. You took wanted to take on this task um, before you came here to mop up the negative energy in, in this realm, to transmute it into the light and then to send it back out again. This can be a very heavy ability, a very heavy gift. Uh, it can feel like a curse instead of a blessing, especially in the earlier days of when you're getting used to this ability. You might find for a lot of you, it doesn't activate until a certain point in your life. And then it could be hard going to begin with until you realize what's going on and then you learn to adapt to it. So with this this group because you absorb a lot of negative energy from others and from the environment and from what's going on in the world you feel that energy quite strongly and it will stick to your own energy so if you have got a lot of inner shadows and things that you've repressed or hidden from the past then the energy that you absorb that has a like frequency to that is going to stick to your own energy and amplify it and make it so much worse. So for this group in particular, it is so important that you do a lot of the inner work on yourself and a lot of inner healing, because the more that you clear 
your own inner shadows, then when you absorb all that shadow energy externally, it won't stick to anything inside of you. And then you'll get to this point where this alchemizing gift will just happen naturally and you'll no longer be affected by it. Or you'll notice the negativity coming in, you'll notice it's there and then you'll let it go because you'll realize what's happening and there'll be nothing left inside of you for it to stick to. So you've taken on this huge responsibility group five where you wanted to bring a lot of light into this realm at this time i have had the sense with this gift that um this hasn't necessarily been like very abundant a gift in the past up until recent decades and there are more and more people now that are coming here with this gift because there is so much negativity being created in this reality at the moment so there needs to be more people here that are alchemists transforming this shadow energy into the light and then beaming it back out again some of it goes back to spirit but some of it is just emitted from you like you're a beacon you know you might be moved to places to live in in places where you maybe don't want to live but where your light is needed or where there is a lot of negative energy that needs to be sorted out for example there might be a huge group of lost souls in the area that you need to help you know transport to the other side and they step through you into your energy and go up into the spirit world it's not literally up but it it feels like that because I have that ability it's like this it's like I'm, a, I'm an uh, elevator you know they step in and I just feel them going up it's the strangest experience so yeah some of you might resonate with being uh, mediums as well where you are in contact with souls that have crossed over in the spirit realm or where you're in contact with lost souls, you know, souls that have, when people have died and they don't move on and they get stuck here and then it creates a lot of uh, heavy vibrations on the earth reality because um, I think that you'll pr probably be quite sensitive to that kind of energy where you might even feel physical symptoms from, from it possibly, you know, like tiredness and headache. It's a draining kind of energy. Some of you will be in places to balance out the earth energies, you know, where there's something very dark has happened in the past and you live in a place to channel that dark energy out of the earth and then you heal it it's like you trans you transfer light energy in um so for some of you this will be something that you do around people more for some of you you might do this wherever you go in whatever circumstance you know where you're absorbing people's energy where you're uh, radiating it back out as light and and helping that way so this could develop in different ways for each of you but for a few of you you could have multiple the mul like the the full spectrum of this ability if you like um now the 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 more unpleasant side of this ability is that you might get to a point where you feel like you don't want to engage with society anymore, where you don't want to be around people because of the impact of how it has on you. And you might go through a phase where you are like quite like a hermit, where you pull yourself back and you know, that's fine. That usually is a part of this gift where that happens at some point. And when that happens, that is the time for you to work on your own energy and clear your own energy. But then you'll get to this point where your energy will be a lot clearer and you'll feel like you can go out into the world again or be around people and you're not affected by them in the same way. And so you feel like you can take part in the world more than you could do before. I feel like this group are very sensitive souls as well because you feel the pain of the collective you feel the pain in this reality you feel the pain of animals you feel the pain of kids you feel the pain of everything and for some of you it might overwhelm you but that again it's linked to the pain that you're carrying inside so this is like a very strong message that I'm repeating here for you to do the inner work on your own shadow to heal that and release it so that the external shadows don't stay with you for long they just come in flow through you they go through your heart space and they become light that's what you're here to do group five okay let me see if there's any other messages here yeah I feel like a lot a lot of you in this group have got a very transformative life where you will have started as one person as as like one being a certain way maybe with a difficult 
upbringing and everything was heavy and dark and, and all of that. And then you yourself go through huge transformation because the alchemy gift, it comes from within you first as you transform yourself. And then you get to a certain point where you are then ready to transform this reality. So a lot of you will, will have had quite difficult upbringings where there's been a lot of trauma and that's for you to almost get used to, if you like, how to change the energy, how to change the frequency. So you might even, for a few of you, you might have started off a very cynical or negative or pessimistic person. And as time goes by, you become hopeful, optimistic and positive. It's like you have this, it's this ability to turn around the polar energy from negative to positive, from dark to light, you know, that's what you are, you balance the energy, you're absorbing the, the shadow energy, turning it into light, that helps to keep this reality balanced, so you are a balancer, and I think for some of you beyond this reality, this is something that you do on a big scale elsewhere, I feel that some of you are quite evolved souls, so you carry this big um, responsibility, wherever you go, where it's like you transform places, you transform realities in different ways. You, it's like you turn the energy around, you know, so you go to where you're needed. And this time you chose to come into the earth reality. But I do sense that some of you have been here for a long time, um, learning about the earth reality and going through uh, different time frames where there's been negativity before and you transmuted it into light. I'm talking about going back a long time on, on in the earth experience, you know, because this is certainly is not the first time that things are the way they are. And you will, some of you will know that deep in your soul that you've been here a long time. You're very familiar with how everything works and it's kind of like, you know what you're doing and you're just getting on with it. Okay. So I really hope that's helped you group five. Thank you for listening. If if you want to listen to another reading, if you're drawn to another one, you you know you could very well have more than one psychic ability. So let me know in the comments how this resonates with you. Hope you have a fab day and I'll see you in the next video.